I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Chris Vermeulen, Chief Market Strategist at TechnicalTraders.com. Thanks so much for being here with me today, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Charlotte. Of course. So this is actually our first time talking, and I wanted to start by asking if you could give me a quick rundown of your background, what you do at TechnicalTraders.com, particularly in terms of precious metals, because that's where our audience is most interested. Right, sure. So my background uh, is mostly technical analysis, which means I focus strictly on price action on the charts. No fundamental analysis, no economic data comes into play. Uh, what we're looking at are simply price patterns, volume, which tells us how many people are interested in a play at any given time, and how many stocks are participating, whether there's fewer or more in a trend, and if there's any divergence between you know, if price is going higher and there's fewer stocks supporting that move, which is what's happening in the stock market right now, that is a bearish sign. Technically, we should be preparing for some type of market pullback, which really leads us into where precious metals and bond prices have been going, which is up and up and up because people are afraid that the markets are going to break down. And from a technical standpoint, it looks pretty ugly uh, for the stock market, but it looks really good for the precious metals. So. That's kind of the background of technical analysis, pretty straightforward uh, because you get to filter out the news and a lot of the emotions. Great, that, that does sound very appealing at some points. So that was a great little rundown. I, I know this is an area that can be a little bit confusing or intimidating from some people. Before we jump into what's happening right now with gold and silver, are there any basic principles that you think investors should know about when they're looking at those markets from a technical perspective? Yeah, well, as a technical trader, I mean, everyone has a different style of trading uh, in different time frames, different time horizons. So really, when you look at technical analysis and when you and I are talking about pricing today, you got to make sure you're looking at it from the perspective of the time frame that I'm focusing on. So if we're look, talking about long term investing trends, uh, we could be, uh, you know, bullish. But as a short term trader for metals, short term, we're actually starting to look for a pullback here in silver and metals. So the key with technical analysis is understanding where we think it's going in that specific kind of time frame, and, and really you trade based on how active of a trader or investor you want to be. So that's kind of the core thing to understand is make sure you understand if we say we're bullish, what time frame and how far out, you know, are we talking for that? Because it's easy to get confused uh, which time frame, you know, somebody's looking at. Right, and that kind of goes back to that in having investors know themselves and each different things are right for different people, which I think mm -hmm. we see really in general everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's talk about the current price action for gold. We've had a really exciting week. We started, I think, not far from the 1800 mark. And this morning we were close to 1900. I'm almost afraid to say the price in case it changes by the time we publish this, but it's <laughs> July 23rd, close to 1900. Yeah. So is that explosive growth supported from a technical standpoint? It is. Um, yeah, gold has got a beautiful pattern. Um, it broke out of a, a multi-year basing formation last year, last July. So we're going on one year that gold broke out and it's been rallying more or less ever since. Other than the COVID blip where there was forced liquidation, margin calls, other than that, gold is back up pushing to almost all time highs. And from a technical standpoint, you know, it actually still has more room to go. I think we are gonna see 19, uh, 1,967 around the 2000 mark. Somewhere in there, there's a couple key technical resistance levels. And based on Fibonacci extension, which gets a little more technical, Based on the power and the momentum behind this rally, it says we should reach around that $2,000 mark. And 2,000 not only is a measured technical move where this momentum should carry us to, but it's also a whole number. And so investors generally say, hey, I bought gold at 1,000. If it goes to 2,000, I'm gonna sell some. So when we get to that 2,000 level, not only is it a technical resistance area, but it's a mental whole number where there's gonna be people naturally saying, hey, I doubled my money, I'm getting out of 2,000. So there's always resistance at you know, 2,000, 2,100, 2,200, or for example, 1,800, 1,900. We're stuck under 19 right now. We were stuck under 18. So all these $100 increments, and then more importantly, $1,000 increments have a lot more weighting, more resistance. 
it's just a bigger mental number for people to sell. So I like gold a lot. The technical pattern saying we still have, you know, really almost another hundred dollars to go from where we are. But from there, that is a level we're most likely going to see some selling, see price consolidate, which is perfectly fine. We don't really want price to go straight up as good as it sounds. When something goes straight up, it typically comes straight back down for at least half of the move. So the slower it goes up, the more it can be sustainable. A rally like this, we need to see a pause and a pullback so we can just take a breather before I think ratcheting up into the, you know, the mid $2,000 mark for gold. What is the time frame that you're looking at there? There's a lot of talk about gold breaking its all time high this year or 2000 this year. What is, what are you looking at? Yeah, the way gold's moving right now and the way the dollar is falling, uh, global fear kind of rising, which has been a big, really fueling uh, gold for investors all around the world. I think we could see gold hit that $2,000 mark. It could be a week from now. It could be a couple of months from now, but I do feel like we're on target to hit that and probably sooner than later. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think when you start looking at $2,500, $2,600 gold, we're looking late next year, just because I feel like there's some dynamics where what's happening right now, gold, silver, and miners is very similar to what happened the first two months of 2008. Gold, silver, miner stocks popped and rallied. They become leaders just before the broad stock market tops out. And that's where I think we are. The stock market is on the verge of topping. All the leaders are starting to shine. It's a very selective market. You need to be long at uh, tech or healthcare or gold miners. But eventually when the stock market does roll over, money is gonna kind of get sucked out of those leaders and they're gonna consolidate for a while. So I think there's a great upside potential uh, later next year, where I think metals are actually going to make their big, big run, where silver could take off gold into the mid 2000s. But I kind of feel like most of the upside, almost all of it is kind of done for this year at this point. Okay. And just because you're talking about 2008, I wondered how much of the work that you do depends on past patterns? Like how, how far back are you looking and how far into the future can you project using the information you have? Mm, good question. Yeah. So if you're looking at investing charts, you're looking at a weekly or a monthly chart and you really want to go back five, 10, as far as, as, far as you can to get a, a gauge of patterns and how they all link to each other and play off of each other. So for an investor, I mean, we're going back to 2010, 2008 uh, to get an idea of what's going on. Now as a shorter term trader, I mean, we're only looking back generally 20 or 30 days. Uh, to catch smaller swing trades and find out what the hot sector is that week, which one looks primed and ready to move. And so we can trade those sectors with ETF. So really, depending on your time frame, you use a different chart and look back period to find these levels. But when you've got a new bull market starting, like in silver, for example, mm -hmm. or even gold miners, uh, you want to look back as far as you can, because most bear markets for commodities, they can lay dormant for 5, 10, 15 years, commodities are very slow to put in a new bull market. So we're looking back to 2006 now to find the next resistance level on silver. So even though silver's got a beautiful short-term chart, I mean, we're looking back a long ways to see where resistance is going to be next. Right, yeah. And let's jump over to silver because it's really been on the rise this week as well. I think a lot of people have been considering that $20 level as the crucial point for it to get past. But I wondered what your thoughts are on that. What are the, the levels silver needs to meet? Sure. Yeah. So I talked about it the other day with subscribers saying, hey, $21 is the, a really critical resistance zone on a technical standpoint. And we broke that uh, a session and a half ago. And then suddenly the market, that was when we broke into a bull market. 21 was a very technical level. Um, you could argue $20.38 to 21, it really depends, but give or take, once we broke 21, you've clearly broken all these little uh, minor support levels. And now the market has just skyrocketed. And now it's the next upside target is $24.36, uh, give or take. Uh, but that's where we're looking to go. So there's a little bit more upside on silver. Uh, we're seeing a big short squeeze. A lot of people were expecting people uh, we're expecting the market to fall for silver. And so they're in a short position to profit from falling prices. But once you break previous resistance and something starts a bull market, you do not want to be short because a bull market lasts many months, if not years. And so that's what we're seeing this week. We're seeing a break of resistance, the start of a bull market, 
and everyone who's short going, oh crap, I got to get out of this trade. And it forces them to buy back their shares, which creates the, the surge. And then on top of it, they also want to get along them because they want to be part of the bull market. So it creates double the buying pressure. And that's why we had this huge pop this week. As soon as it broke resistance, it was just the floodgates open for all the stop orders, people to cover their positions and then to get long silver. And the market's a little overbought. I think we're going to start to see it pause and pull back over the next week or so and take a breather. Okay, so when you talk about these resistance levels and silver's broken, it's its previous resistance level, how do you know, maybe this is a silly question, but how do you know for sure, okay, it's broken? Are you looking back at what's happened in the past? How are you like, okay, now this is the time? Right, so if there's a clean line in the sand, a previous high on the chart, which there was around the $21 mark, if price gets above that and closes on a daily basis above that resistance level, that means, hey, we've, we've broken it, we closed above it, so it is broken. A lot of times the market will run up intraday, break that resistance level, but by the time the market closes at four o'clock, the price is back below it. So that was a test of resistance and it got rejected. So you really do need the market to close on a daily basis above it for a short-term trader. A long-term investor, you really wanna see the weekly chart hold up or the monthly chart. And that goes to show there's just a lot more confidence investors. It's not just a, a kind of a running or test of resistance, but it's actually holding for a time period and the longer it can hold, the better it is. So if it holds for a week, I mean, you should have a multi-week rally. If it holds for a month, you should see a multi-month rally. So um, it's important that price closes depending on your time frame of trader for the day, week, or month. Okay, that's very helpful. So the situation for silver is, it's quite different from gold, although we talk about them together a lot. We have gold really close to its all-time high and silver is really, still quite far away. So I wondered if you could go into a little more detail on the price potential for silver. Um, do you see it heading to a new all-time high or even, I know people love to talk about triple digit silver in the mm -hmm. future. Sure, so typically what we see in the precious metal sector, we see the gold miners lead the way. Typically the gold stocks, which are the highest speculative kind of play for the sector, rally first and then we tend to see gold and silver generally lags. Well, we haven't seen that. What we've seen is gold broke out last year first. And gold miners, just like silver, are nowhere near their highs con considering what, what gold has been doing, which is uh, a little interesting, not what most people expected. But silver is usually the last one. It's the laggard, and it's finally broken out. So I really like the way silver has have broken here. And um, in terms of uh, the upside potential for silver, if we can get above, if we can break above 2436 on the silver chart and hold there for a day or a week, then the next target is around 34. So it's gonna be a pretty big jump. And as price starts to move higher, the jumps actually get bigger and bigger. And there's the big argument out there. There's the, you know, the huge short positions in silver that I just saw a chart that is about 130 days uh, it would take for the shorts to keep buying silver to cover all of their short positions. And people, a lot of people I think know that JP Morgan's got a massive short position. And I mean, 130 days of silver rallying for everyone to, to buy back. I mean, we could see like a 2010 type rally or some parabolic, you know, a bulb spike, like a, where it just goes completely parabolic and goes straight up. And who knows, triple digits isn't out of the equation. If you, if I step back and look at the long-term charts of silver, we actually have it mapped out that in the future it should ride, reach about $340 an ounce. I mean, that is crazy extreme. It's not something I really talk about uh, very often, but it is out there that it could actually get to that based on past um, uh, price action. So who knows where it's gonna go? I do see, I think I, we're gonna see triple digits. I think we'll see $100 silver, but that could be still a year or two away. But I do think we could see $48. We'll see a test of that 2011 high. I think we could see that really within the next 12 months. Okay, that is great. I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about JP Morgan, the short positions, because if you're in the silver market, if you pay attention, you do hear a lot about that. Uh, you hear about manipulation. So what is your take on that type of activity and what's going on there? Yeah, I've, uh, I stay out of that whole manipulation. Mm -hmm. Like I don't trust the financial markets, don't get me wrong. I, I don't trust them at all. I prefer physical metals. Uh, 
if something bad's going to happen, I want physical metals stored outside of the financial system. Um, when it comes to the manipulation, I think everyone kind of agrees there's manipulation going on. JP's got this massive short position. They just had to do a huge delivery for the last futures contract, which kind of caught them off guard, I think. Um, I don't really know what to say. I mean, it's just, it's all, it's all BS. There's just so much manipulation in this sector and what's going on with it. I think eventually there's going to be a calling of all those shorts, whether it has started now uh, or it, it happens next year. Eventually, some people are going to be caught on the wrong side and, and that hopefully is going to fuel silver to an unprecedented level, at least for a short period of time so that people betting against it can get what they deserve. <laughs> so it'll be really interesting to see how it goes, but I try not to get caught up in uh, individual companies and manipulation and all that stuff because uh, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. We've all known the financial markets. As soon as there's money involved, whether it was hundred or 200 years ago, there's corruption, there's manipulation. So I've, I just kind of write it off and I follow the technicals and sure, sometimes you get whipsawed around because of manipulation, but there's nothing you can do about it and you can't tell when it's going to happen. So I don't stress over it. Okay. So I think this has all been leading up to, this is a lot of information for investors to have. Mm -hmm. What should people be doing with it? Um, it seems more and more urgent to get in these markets now. What's the way to do that? How are you playing this market? Sure. So I, I, looking at a long-term investor, kind of like a set it, forget it, somebody who's looking to be in a hot sector that's running. I mean, the precious metals are in a full out bull market. I think you should have physical metals. I think you should own some uh, gold miners as well, silver miners. Um, I do feel like there's going to be some weakness if the stock market goes into a bear market. Uh, I think this sector is going to hold, it's going to get pulled back, but I think it's going to hold up fairly well because this situation we have now with the stimulus, with every country just plump dumping in money uh, and the fact that the economics really are very bearish as well, I think it's all bullish for metals. So I think they're going to be fairly supported just because the worse things get in the economy, the more stimulus there are, which is going to help boost metals and things. So I think it's a portion of your account. You know, everyone should have like five or 10 or 15% of their portfolio, I think in precious metals. And this is the time to technically be in it because they're in a bull market. They could keep running and they might never look back or not for several years. So you definitely have to be involved in this sector. Uh, when it comes to the broad market, we've trimmed off half of our equities position because we feel as though this is a big dead cat bounce. The, the fact that the markets are moving higher with terrible fundamentals, it, the economy is kind of eroding. You know, the only thing really holding it up are technology and, and stimulus, just free money getting pushed into the system. And that eventually will fail. And the more money the Fed keeps putting in, the Fed, they helped stimulus in 2000 with the tech bubble. They helped in 2008 with new bigger stimulus. Here we are 2020 with bigger stimulus. If you keep pushing money in, every time you do it, it has to get bigger and bigger and bigger to sustain the same type of uh, kind of trajectory. And eventually something's gonna break. So I feel like that's sooner than later. So if we're very cautious on equities. We trimmed half mm -hmm. of our equities off. We've moved to precious metals with a portion of it. So we're still riding equities, but we're really riding the, uh, the precious metals train right now for quick gains. Okay, well, I think those are all my questions. We covered a lot of ground, but are there any other points that you would leave the audience with? I think we kind of covered it all. I think you just gotta be extra cautious here. I know, I know a lot of people don't wanna be bearish on the stock market. Everyone is buying stocks. So me saying that there's, this is a bear market bounce, I, you know, most people aren't gonna to wanna to hear that. But the reality is the market's rising with less support and it's, it's getting weaker and weaker. And uh, you look at almost every sector, they're making, they're not making new highs. It's just the NASDAQ technology healthcare and a few big companies doing all the work. So you gotta be extra cautious right now. It's easier to miss some profits than it is to get clobbered and, and lose 20 or 30% of your account. So uh, that's the way I look at it. Save your money, avoid a potential big drop going forward. Okay, that's a great message to end on. Thank you so much, Chris. It was great to have you today. Thanks for having me, Charlotte. I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Chris Vermeulen with technicaltraders.com.